His Excellency Professor Jagdish Mukherjee, the Governor of Assam, and the Chancellor of KK Handik State Open University in Assam. He has been a teacher, a great academic leader. He has demonstrated to be a friend of education and educationists. And to me, he is a great well wisher. Professor Rafi Das, Vice Chancellor of the University, a well known academics in ODL, in fact, an international celebrity. The registrar of the university, members of various bodies of the university, distinguished former and present vice chancellors in universities in Assam, graduating students, their parents, members of press and media, distinguished invitees, very good morning to all of you. For me and my wife who is present in the audience, it is indeed a great privilege to be here today on the occasion of fifth convocation of this highly upcoming key university in ODL education system in the country. I thank and pay our gratitude for the university authorities for inviting us on this great occasion. I am very happy that so many young people are graduating today. They receive their degrees their medals and certificates. It is indeed also a pleasure to see among the graduating students the full impact of an open university. We have Divyanjans, we have senior learners, we have learners from Gaols, and we have learners from everywhere. The great part of it that the women occupy more than 50% of the total studentship. I am indeed very happy. I congratulate all of you to have earned the degrees. In being an academic myself, I appreciate the effort you all have put in to earn these degrees under all the challenging conditions, at least in the last two, three years, of pandemic. Once again, my congratulations to you. I am very sure that as you move out of the campus, the education of the university will be a foundation stone on which you will build up your future. You will learn from the work. You will learn from wherever possible. But I am sure wherever you are, you are a great personality and a student and alumni of this key university in the state of Assam. While I congratulate you for your success, your success would have been possible without great support from teachers, the university staff, and above all, your parents who endured during the time you earned your degree, all the hardships of life, but ensured that you are provided for your needs. Please keep in mind that as a future citizen, you owe all that what you get is through your parents and through your teachers. And I therefore congratulate them once again for their contribution. When you leave 
this campus. The world outside is very different. It is not the same. But what will make you a winner is that the knowledge which you attain and that you adapt to the surroundings by virtue of your being part of a university, part of a team learning, and part of being togetherness. And you would be a successful in industries. When I stand here, I recall the great contribution the state has made in enriching the culture of this country. It's a great country. In Assam, plays role in almost all spheres of cultural life, whether it's music, whether it is producing thinkers, social leaders, dance in music. We must all be very proud of it. You must also recognize that this commitment of a cultural contribution in a greatness of people of Assam. The country recognized this contribution, even in G20 being held, being to be held in India as a chairman of the G20, Assam got the biggest cake of arranging four meetings of G20. It speaks of commitment of the country, commitment of people of Assam, and I thought when you are going to enrich the total canvas of this country, you would appreciate the contribution you would make in coloring the nation's paradigm, coloring the nation's scene with bright young colors. I wish you best on that account. Where we are today, friends, what we have done in the last seven, eight years, it's been worthy to be proud of. Can I just mention a few words of where we are? Please understand, what we have done, that we have used a mantra of reform, we have used, based on a mantra of reform to perform, in transform of economy, which now grows at a very high rate. We are marching ahead on the path of economic growth and development. India today has achieved the milestone of being the fifth largest economy in the world. I think we must all be very proud of it. This is a new India that does not shy away from the from feeling proud of its history, its value, culture, community bonding, and society. Through the new <coughs> through the newer and people friendly policies such as digital India, Swachh Bharat Abhiyan, Smart cities, startup India, an overarching scheme of Atm Nirbhar Bharat, which stands on five pillars of economy and what they are infrastructure, 21st century technology, demand and vibrant demography, and few more. And we are marching towards the commitment of the Prime Minister to the nation with Sabka Saath in Sabka Vikas. This growth trajectory, people tend to wonder, what are we doing with this economy? The growth trajectory enabled the India to focus on to implement our indices, basic infrastructure, especially in social and agriculture sector, by harnessing the scientific developments it's important to know that every country in the world suffered because of pandemic. We also suffered. But then, in the words of the President of India, and I quote, in its initial phase, COVID-19 also hurt India's economy badly. Yet, guided by our leadership, driven by our resilience, we soon came out of downturn and resume the growth saga. Most sectors of economy have shaken off the pandemic effect. India has been among the fastest growing major economy." Unquote. 
it is the time that we dedicate ourselves to nation building, preserves the cultural heritage and value, while the quality of life of each citizen is improved. I would like to mention that the quality of life may mean differently. And the role of the university is to articulate what should be the quality of life. It cannot be a quality of life what somebody lives outside this country. This country has its own culture, its own colors, and therefore our quality of life, while utilizing all the infrastructure benefits, have to be at a different state where we commit ourselves to the nation development and nation building. Let's not forget that country is committed to progress following all the commitment to SDGs. And you know that in the Paris Agreement, countries signed the commitment towards SDGs. And one among them is the environmental control. Being part of the university convocation, I like to dwell on something on NEC which is a great changer. Policy announced in 2020 brings a new dawn in education arena. It wants to emphasize on Indianness in education. It's not that we are not educating, it's not that we do not have policies, but what we are now focusing on, the Indianness of the education, in making each learner feel very proud of whatever they are learning. We want to enrich the learning experience of all the people. And this policy has been debated most widely than any other policy in the past. In the Prime Minister of the country, the Honourable Sri Modiji has been himself leading the charge of discussing this policy, adapting this policy, implementing this policy, in making people benefit out of the policy to the intended goal. What he said, it is very interesting to remember what he said, and within that line lies the change. And he thinks, and I quote him, the needs of 21st century India cannot be fulfilled through the ways of 20th century. Now within this one sentence is the significance of change. Significance for the change for which we have to struggle hard and to deliver. He further said that the 21st century schools, which university, I'm sure, the present university will also do, and he said that 21st century schools are quite different. What they are? Critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, curiosity, and communication. These are the five possible future learning abilities which each person has to be created. And I thought this university is in a great position to bring all these elements of future learning into the firmament. While he advocated a number of technologies, but I like to quote him what he said on Shiksha Par. You remember, uh, the 5th of September is celebrated a Teacher's Day. On that day, he said, one of the, he said that, a formula to learn a new methods. Very interesting, you know. He says that the new age learning would cover, engage. Students are not engaged only in classwork, engaged beyond. They wish to explore. It's not what teacher teach, they must be exploring. They must experience, go to the field, go to society, go to villages, understand come back, express their own opinion on what they have learned, what they try to imbibe, and then excel. These are the five mantra the Honorable Prime Minister has given. I am very happy that in his address, the Vice Chancellor mentions the contribution of open universities towards achieving the targets on gross enrollment ratios, which we are committed that by 20 35, 
it leads to 50 percent, we are somewhere about 26 percent, and this works very well. NEP has a very special position in ODI. Your university has made an impact already in Assam in becoming a beacon of future in the learning in open area. Mind you that in last one and a half year, UGC has already approved nearly 120 programs which would be given online. So the earlier system of correspondence courses, open universities, and now the online learning utilizing technologies is going to be the future to attain the gross online ratios of 50% and above. I like to emphasize, while we do wonderful things, that there are challenges ahead in the ODL system. And these challenges are, in my opinion, maintain the quality, and that quality comparable to any university, which is what is called the full-time university, like Guwahati University. Tomorrow, if our graduates go outside, we must give them equal respect because they contain the equal standards of quality. It's a big challenge. We have been struggling over the years, but there has been an image now with number of MOOC courses available, number of NPTEL courses available, number of all other courses possibly developed by different universities available to learn. So quality is a challenge, and I am sure this has to be addressed. Acceptability. I still remember when I was chairman in Union UPSC, candidates would come in many a times. Some of the experts would make a comment, oh yeah, he is from an open university. Underlying feature is that he is inferior. It was, I ensured to it, that no students who come from open university system, because I spent my 35 years in education, and knowing fully well how much rigor self-learning each of the open university students do, that they, they must be accepted with open arms, not by, hey, they are in fear. I think this culture has to be avoided. It's a great challenge. You have to create that culture that each of your students when go out, it is not inferior to anybody. A lot of field work has to be done. Because what PM has said, that unless you go out in the laboratory of the life, you will not learn. Then one of the limitations of open learning has been the field work. And therefore, courses in engineering, courses in science has not become very popular. Though Indira Gandhi Open University now have programs in engineering and technology, future open universities must devote a lot of time in the field work in each of the subjects. Make them to learn from society so that they become very beneficial. In the last is the hand-on work in laboratories, but more importantly, and Honorable Vice Chancellor touched on that, the quality assurance standards for open universities. It's, a, it's, a, it's not developed in the country. NAC has done a lot of good work for all other universities, but this is an area where your university can contribute, bringing out the benchmarks in future. But the last where this country's education is going to be critical is being how to create an assessment method which is not looking at the rot learning but looking the innate learning of each of the student differently by not in not in mass but assessing each individual in capacity of his individual learning before i close let me mention immediately the four challenges. Create quality education, as I mentioned in accreditation. Create learning beyond, and that's what you have said. In fact, your university said beyond the boundaries of learning, and there is lying so much of it. What is lying beyond? Beyond the students. Normally there are students in the universities, but your university is getting all, every citizen, practicing managers, working people in the field, 
we have seen senior people who have interest of education. So whole list of learning beyond, create application of ICT so that effectiveness of learning come. This country is known yet for lesser productivity in education. I thought you can become a laboratory of learning where ICT improves the efficiency and our levels of productivity increase. In the great role which we will do, create learning resources, we talk about MOOC and NPTEL. Why don't I talk about learning resource which KKH SOU would develop? These are my requests to the university, to the fraternity of the university, my alumni friends and the teachers here. Before I conclude, I urge upon all you, my friends, the degree recipients, to remain committed to the values which you got from this university, from this great state in the country. Whenever you walk, you may pursue, you will find that a commitment to excellence, and that's the only word which will keep you floating, a commitment to excellence, to justice and fair play, to hard work and team spirit, will stand you in good stead. It's time to put your learning into the real world and ensure the country gallops into the best of the world. I wish you very best in all your future missions and goals. I pray to the Almighty that He showers on you all the happiness of the world. Thank you very much. Jai Hind.